Just, just a couple of um, statistics. We love statistics in the postal world. Uh, 370 percent. Uh, that was the volume increase in hitmap data just in three years. Last year there was 427 million messages exchanged between posts, and that's a drop in the ocean. It's a tiny volume. So that gives you an understanding of how big the postal sector is. Parcels are growing, and we say parcels we mean small packets are growing by 15 to 20 percent in some operators. And that's not just putting pressure on the operator because he, has to, he or she has to change from a domestic operation which was letter-based to a parcel-based operation, but it also puts pressure on customs. And one last figure, and this is unique to the UK at least, is that in the last year, our revenues from our customs operation have gone up by 210 percent. So you can see, we're turning an opportunity into revenue. In preparation for today, I was just thinking about the environment we're in, outside of the post office's um, network as well as inside. We've got examples, and um, I think Cynthia's got a brochure that shows some examples where we the post have innovated using data. And uh, Royal Mail has an uh, intelligence service where we track parcels to the door and our post can pick up information and even pictures of the delivery points, which may need the right data for other purposes. But, and this is a big but, we don't see ourselves as data companies. We don't see ourselves, and we don't have um, a sort of uh, a, a history, a tradition of using the data we have. We're also, we have data in our DNA in a way. We have been tracking parcels using barcodes for a very long period of time, and virtually uh, that network spans the globe through the UPU and through IPC and other services. Um, but I was also looking at how data has grown, and technology is driving demand as well. Um, I live in Cambridge in the UK, and there's a company in Cambridge who um, have just invented a new way of storing data. They store it either on glass, so they laser it onto a glass disk the size of a UK penny, or they can turn it into the DNA and then transfer the data via the internet. And I learned a new word, one um, better byte. A better byte is something in the region of 100,000 billion uh, bytes. So you can see you can put a lot of information on a penny. And that's driving not only the ability of, um, uh, to, to store data, but that opens up doors for people who want to use data. Um, some other small points is we are the posts and we are some of the most trusted and I always use this um, fact in the UK we're more trusted than HMRC, than our border agency, than our government. If you look at the, um, the, the tables, we're more trusted than they are. And of course, whenever there is a terrorism or a cyber crime, we are one of the first uh, companies that are affected by that and we have great obligations around protecting our data. We're a global company, as everybody in the room is a global company. We work with our border agencies, but we also recognise our border agencies have limitations. Many of you talk to me about my border agency opens at 9 in the morning and closes at 5 in the afternoon, Monday to Friday, and not open at the weekends, doesn't do nights, etc. But they're also under a lot of pressure. We've seen in the UK a sort of 6 to 10% budget reduction for our border agencies year on year in the last few years. And one last point, picking up something that was said earlier, is we're also shy. We're very conservative when it comes to using data. I know in our case, and I'll talk about our example in a minute, our, gov our um, legal department are very worried about data protection. The new general um, data protection regulation that's coming in, that scares the life out of my uh, business. We are so conservative about taking data that we have and using it and relaying them on the right side of the law. So that's one of the things that stops us from moving forward in a way. You know, technology, see if I can break this as well. Um, this picture shows the benefit of Photoshop. Um, <laughs> you weren't supposed to laugh then, actually. Um, but I have the pleasure of being the security and customs transversal for Post Europe, and that gives me a lot of opportunity 
to work with customs authorities, both the WCO and the European Commission. So what I'm going to say is sort of grounded in that experience. Um, I also get to work with customs authorities in the UK a lot, and I get to look at some of the pressures they're under, both in terms of physical and border security. Um, and one of the things that we raise, and I think it's very important to say at the beginning, is that our sector is very unique, and it has been recognised by, both by the WCO and by the European Commission in the recent regulation of UCC. Um, we handle billions of items, not all those packets are, have barcodes, and we don't know always who's coming into our network. We, by design, have an open access network. And another small statistic, in the UK we have 1,205, that one, 125,000 access points. That's access points that any customer in the UK can access our network with a good or a packet. We have a global network which relies on our partners. And in, in a way that's our strength, but also our weakness. Because as we move forward, our partners have to move forward with us. Data is unique to us. Our collection points are unique. And some of the challenges we have are around data quality. So um, this slide is the good news and the bad news, as it were. So I'll start with the bad news. The bad news is that um, we are facing increased, increasing regulation. John Paul mentioned it this morning, in fact, in his opening speech. Um, when the UCC came in last year, the post had a derivation until, next, uh, until 2020. In other words, we don't have to comply. We don't have to ask our partners to send advanced electronic data until the Commission has undertaken a review in 2019. But they have accepted the CN document, as has the UPU, as has the WCO, as the um, declaration and the 7, point, 7 plus 1 data set is a standard application across our network. The UPU has implemented um, step 1 of the IPP, which provides barcodes on items from the 1st of January 2018, and that's a challenge in itself for posts, that they're not going to be enabled. In other words, you can have a barcode, you can track the item, but it won't have any data that will facilitate customs. There are also existing legislation and, and, and regulations around EMS. For those of you who are EMS partners already know you have to provide IMAC data, and those members of Interconnect also provide and all will be providing data. But looking forward, we have what I'm um, calling a, a sort of perfect storm of regulation. And that perfect storm of regulation is around things like the single uh, digital market. The European Union encouraged us, as posts and the, the parcel operators, to provide better e-commerce services. We talked about that this morning. And we've also got the modern, uh, modernization of the VAT on the horizon. The Commission are proposing a raft of changes, including the single window application, where customers in a third country will have to register and pay tax before the item is shipped. But we don't have a process defined about how we're going to do that. Um, also, at the same time, it will drive the threshold de minimis down to zero. That's a big challenge for the post, not just in terms of the VAT regulations, but also in terms of, as uh, my friend from Spain mentioned earlier, packets that we handle invariably are small, lightweight, low value items in the UK. The vast majority, and I mean the vast majority, are below five pounds. So there's, a, there's an awful lot of collecting to do for very little revenue. And the study that Post Europe, the VAT group of commission, shows that the cost of collection is higher than the cost of the VAT that will be generated. We also have Customs 2020 on the horizon. The Commission has set up a group of five, um, um, I call them courier, fast pass operators, and five posts to talk about how we will design a regulatory framework for the future. And we've got ICS2, the import control system. And the import control system is around the safety security registration and advanced passes coming in to the European Commission, into the European Union which basically means that if you're a third party country, you will have to provide data in advance. We hope that's a 7 plus 1 data sent. It will come to the centre of Europe and then the information will be shifted to every other EU member border agency to come back to the, to the accepting border agency who can then make a decision. The timeline for that is 2020-2021. 
And of course, globally, we have the UPU, and that's a, a challenge for us. Many of us, and I think uh, John Paul will know this very well, um, as France chair the customs group and is very involved in EAD and the UPU, there's a big challenge around stage two or step two of the IPP, which is timeline around 2020, and data collection, and also the need to build capacity because we are a network where everybody has equal access to us and we have colleagues and, and partners in some of the remotest parts of the world and we have to get them on board. The UPU has designed a CDS system and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So here we are, we're facing massive challenges with the bad news for our sector in terms of regulatory and poster is, as they say in America, all over that, which is good. It's giving us the post new challenges around data collection, but we have different timelines, and in a way, we have different um, confusing messages from the Commission, if I could be radical. On one hand, we've got the need for greater transparency around e-commerce and generating e-commerce, whilst at the same time introducing customs legislation, such as the zero threshold, which will make customs uh, a more of a challenge to, to us. So I, I actually was looking and thinking about this, and, and I thought I'll just quote from Churchill, um, as I always do. Um, Churchill once said, a nation trying to tax itself to prosperity is rather like a person standing in the bucket and trying to lift themselves up by the handles. You can't have both, is what he's really saying. And we're in that sphere. So that's the bad news. And as you can see from my slide, I think we're in a zone where no longer is data an option, it's compulsory. We have to do it. And tomorrow you'll hear from some of the operators who are using data in imaginative ways to get close to the customer and drive performance. In our case, we purchased CDS, the UPU system, as they say on the BBC, other systems are available, such as the one that the Slovenia Post uses. But CDS for us has meant that we have moved from a manual customs base, and you mentioned uh, the stopping and searching of every path from manually, or at least in a risk basis, to an electronic customs clearance. And I was just talking to my colleague in Germany, and um, we measure the quality of service through customs. When we started, it was four days for a parcel from America. Went into a queue before customs, went through a queue, went through customs, and you come out the other day. That is not a saleable proposition in this day and age. We moved to a CDS system where the item goes through in a second. We scan the barcode, the system makes a decision, and the decision is either to release it, to charge it, at which point taxes will automatically apply, or it goes to border force because it's suspected um, that the item is uh, a prohibition restriction or IPR or something of that ilk. Now you can see that what we're now doing is, to use your expression, we're using a small, small data in a specific area to generate a good. And that good is providing your own now with the ability to drive performance. I know how long an item is in a Q4, because but Border Force scan it in on arrival and scan it out. It also tells Border Force why the item has been sent to them. So it will say, this item has come to you because it's code 51. Code 51 is known suspect. So they know why it's there. And I can also have conversations about how long things are in queues, and I can have a conversation with them about why things are taking too long. And also can pick up information about why certain goods are being sent to customs. An example of that was we were getting lots of goods from America called um, drugs. In America, that's, that could be something you buy over a counter. In the UK, it's something slightly different. So we drive in performance that way, but we're also helping border agencies drive performance because they don't have to stop every parcel. They can manage by remote control. They can sit in the room and they can look at information, or they can, as they often do, come on the floor and eyeball the item. We're driving customer needs. Customers are saying to us, good, I can get my item. I now have an electronic tag on that item. I can now develop a system to do an SMS to you to say, your parcel has just gone through customs. Please pay online. If you don't want it, tell me now, I'll send it back. <laughs> and I can prove to customs what came in. I can prove to customs what went out. And I can get paid for it a lot faster. Which also driving us down the route of some of the other activities that customers want. They want DDP, prepaid customs. So we can now have a module where I can identify from the data what's coming in, how much it's worth, and I can also give that information to my partner who's selling the service in USPS 
or in another country. We can provide fully landed costs, and we can give our partners access to our cost modules as we go forward. So um, I'm just going to actually finish now. So this was a graph that showed you some of the changes in the world, and that's only going to get faster. It's a truism that we are in a fast moving world. We know we are. We have to adapt. Well, we might have to adapt faster if something goes wrong. Another incident, 9-11, or the, um, the bomb that was found in, a, in 2008. So there's a lot of changes. We posts sit in the customs world. And when we sit in the customs world, we're saying we're different, but we have the ability to provide new electronic services. So in summary, yes, big data, but start with small data. Seven plus one data set from your partner and the use of an electronic system, whether that be the civilian solution or the World Mail solution from CDS, will make a big difference to operation. In addition to that, we're allowed to export that data to other systems that Border Force can use. You need to set up the right framework internally. You have to have the right mindset. How am I going to use this data? How do I then springboard from this solution into something better for my customer? We need to build partnerships with the border agency, and we need um, to agree that data is, is the king in terms of our performance. So thank you very much. Um, I took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, um, but thanks for your attention.